Let us begin the Regina Celli. Let us all rise in the name of the Father, Father and, and the, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Queen, Queen of, of heaven, heaven, rejoice. rejoice. Alleluia. For he whom you did marry to bear. Alleluia. Has, has risen, risen as, as he said. said. Alleluia. Pray, Pray for, for us to God. God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad. O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life and through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. There's no more space down. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 30-day Regina <coughs> Chaley Challenge with the theme of the power of the resurrection. I'm Joy. I'm Patrick. We got Talon. We're the Campbells. And you're watching Joyful Hope TV. Live from the Joyful Hope Studio. At the House of Prayer. For all, all peoples. peoples. Servion. Servion. We, we are, are here, here to serve, serve. and you are family, family here. here. We're getting better, guys. Yep. <laughs> We're, you think after a couple years we'd have it done, but look at this. There is some Latin. What the are we going to do? Passcode. The password. So, so we have to learn this Latin to get into the place of refuge. Okay, here we go. Eus in obito nostro presentia muni amor. Translation. Here it goes. May he strengthen us with his presence at the moment of our death. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, uh, say it like a prayer. Oh, may he strengthen us with the presence of the moment of our death. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> we are going to proceed to the top two winners. Or Who top are the, three, depending. Maybe the three winners. It's Chuck, Chuck Dufresne, All and right, Joy, and, and Wendy Edwards, and Wendy. John, with Aaron, of course, the artist. And, okay, so let's say Hail Mary for these. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, women and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us goodness. sinners. Spread the effects of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So I just want to do a roll call and say hi to everyone. Roll out the barrel. So Chuck, Joy, Nancy and Deacon and Andy, Kathy, Kathy Simone, Simone, Wendy, Wendy and John, Lori Holiday. Patsy Wong from hey, Canada. Hey, Patsy Wong. Paulita Cabaron. Welcome, Paulita. Whom should we Paulettes. thank for Paulettes. making you come Paulettes. here? Paulettes. Paulettes. This is your second time, I think, right? Okay. Welcome back, Paulettes. Grace uh, and Stephen Ball. Jason from Malaysia. Everdinson. Santa Santiago. Welcome back, Everdinson. Uh, Donna Schreier. Oh, oh Donna. Beautiful and then, lady yes. from the East Coast. Also, Tony Orta, another beautiful lady, and Kim LeBlanc. And Diane. Very beautiful lady. And Rod. 
Diane and Rod are in the house. Kim Leblanc. I've been taking yes. care of my mom. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm dear. sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll put her in our prayer intentions. Oh. So I've got some really good news that's coming our way for, for the ministry, which involves all you guys, you know. So, so don't forget to share and like this link. Yeah. Like it first. After like, you like it, then you share it. Right. And then share it to other people. So, you know, um, there are a lot of good things. I can't really, my tongue is tied. I can't say a lot of the things that I've been, you know, told today. I got a call from Lee John, our nonprofit. And he gave me a, a lowdown of what's going to happen. Oh, I got to say it. I got to say it. Please all right, all right, say it. Right, right. Please right. say okay, it. Okay, they don't know it. Okay, so looks like we're going to, like, meet the bishop. And we get to, like, be introduced as... That's tomorrow, right? The 23rd. Oh, so you guys pray goodness. for us. Please pray um, for us. But they're excited to, to, to learn about our ministry and to, you know... Um, uh, work with us. I mean, it's not like, it's not like, you know, like when we were first like, hello, I'm, you know, we didn't know if we kissed the ring or what, what, it, what we were going to get into or whether he was going to reject us. It's really, really nice. We already know, they already know who we are. We're working with the United for Life Foundation and they want to say, hey, we, so they put two people in the room that they're going to work with us to say, the diocese, you know, wants to work with you. You got stuff that you're planning at, um, EWTN and stuff that you're playing at the shrine, let us help. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm, I'm so excited. So this we get is to exciting. Yeah, it's exciting to um, to be able to to go into there um, to have a history. You know, we've been doing this ministry for ten years, and so this is the first year that we've been in Alabama. And this is the first year they're excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like the that we're starting from scratch you know we get to come in with with uh, 10 years of experience of doing what we're doing and with a long track record and so it's it's really nice i i've never had that feeling i mean i was like you know not thinking that it would go that well you know thinking that we had to like show documentations and proof and it and it's not like that it's like they just want to get to know you and see how we can collaborate and i'm like wait i don't have to prove anything i don't have to like show my my pet degree or something you know <laughs> i'm a mutt <laughs> you know so what are you going to do you're going to go in there i'm going to say i'm a carpenter and now we make crosses <laughs> this is my pretty wife <laughs> so, so i was just having a deja vu because <laughs> the last time we did it in this diocese <laughs> remember what happened i was just a quiet oh. person like i didn't oh, even yeah. want to talk my lips or i remember you know, yeah we met the bishop it's like yeah. sealed and i don't want to talk and it's like we i'm just bishop there Baker. for the props right i don't know i i knew i knew you were there for a good reason but joy was always i'm in the background i'm in the background don't bring me up don't make me talk and that's what she said she said don't make me talk you go in there and you forget something to say you're on your own. Don't make me talk. And we I mean, I it. gave it specific instructions. Right. I remember. I said, you did. Don't you so, dare let so, me talk. So like it was years ago. We were So we were meeting Bishop Baker in Alabama. It wasn't even our diocese, but we were waiting for um, a meeting with him. And we had our crosses on a table. And we're looking at the cross. We said, which one should we show the bishop? And I was talking to Talon about it. And Joy was like in the restroom. She, you went out in the other hallway. And this guy comes up behind me. He says, these are beautiful. And I said, yeah. And I'm starting to explain the cross. And this is a Celtic cross. And this is, this is what it means. And this is the, what it, it signifies. And then I'm thinking, who is this guy? And he starts asking me all these questions. And then I look at his ring. And I realize, this it's is the, the bishop. bishop. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. We rehearsed this. I was supposed to kiss his ring. But, you know, we were in the middle of a conversation. I didn't want to, like, have, like, like, and then grab his hand. and nom, 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 nom. You know, I didn't know what to do. So I'm just like, I'm going to play cool. I'm not going to go for the ring. I'm not going to go. Maybe you think I'm trying to hold his hand or something. But it was, like, mid, you know, I, I think we were, like, five minutes into the conversation when, I, when it dawned on me with his ring and his cross on his chest that this was Bishop Baker. He, he just came up from behind while Talon and I were saying, which one should we bring into the bishop to show him our work? And then the door opens to the hallway, 
And that's where we thought he was going to come out. We thought he was going to come out of this grand hallway. Joy comes out. She sees that we're staying with the bishop. And I never seen anything so graceful. She walks in and she kneels down and she does this curtsy. She kneels down and she grabs his hand and she's like, And Talon and I are laughing and laughing. Oh, it was funny. Uh, but, you know, um, I guess he's used to that, people coming up and kissing his hand. Well, some bishop doesn't like it. They feel they want to be humble. But there's a grace there when you kiss uh, the ring of the bishop. There's an indulgence. My mom taught me that, so I always look for the hands and... You know, of course, there's a risk that you will be slapped. <laughs> you know, yeah. that story, right? Yeah. <laughs> <Be careful. laughs> we're not going to say, we didn't say anything. We're not We're not talking about Pope Francis. Hey! What? What? Why what? would you say that? I'm saying, you know, I mean, of all the bishops I know who slap people, <laughs> we do things really good around here. But anyways, Joy was not slapped. She was well-received. And then we went up there, and we, we were supposed to be, like, there 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's about as much time. We were there for over an hour More. talking. Yeah, like maybe an hour and a half, because right? Because we started at 3, and we ended at 5 plus. Oh, man. And, no, and there's was, no one in the office anymore. Yeah, it was good. It was a good meeting. And, uh, and you know, he kept on wanting to know why we were named Joyful Hope Mich Missionaries. And he went down this. He kept on saying... He why said, were you in King, why, why are you in what King Street? What, what made you go to the street? And he asked so many times. Three times. And we were trying to keep play it safe. We were yeah. trying we not to. We don't want to go to the mystical. We don't want to go to the prophetic. We don't want to say, oh, we're prophets. And this is Jesus no talks to me. It's like, yeah, I've seen what. You read the Bible. Look at they even, just stone Paul and Acts. Yeah, you don't say that. So I mean, I don't, I don't want to like give any Forgive attention. It's like, okay, you guys are, we're gonna excommunicate you or something. But he kept on asking, kept on asking. Joe looked at me, and I know she told me not to bring her in the conversation, but he wanted to know. So I said, okay, go ahead. And then the Holy Spirit came to me. <laughs> And she and was said, on can, fire. Can I, can I say what? <laughs> he asked three times. And on the third time, we were like, okay, go ahead. You know, and Joy told the whole story how the Blessed Mother uh, came to her in a dream and was telling her to visit the cemetery. We told him the whole story. And it, it, was, a, it was designed by God because he, it was an answered prayer. So the... The testimony that Joy gave of what the Blessed Mother said is exactly what the bishop was praying about. And, just and he imagine needed this. a confirmation. I was hesitant. I don't want to go into the mystical. I know I will be rejected, but that's not the plan of God. The, no. The, the bishop needs a witness yes. for all the efforts that he had done in the past. Right, because we at the time, we didn't know that he was retiring. Yeah. And he really put his efforts into the Joyful Hope Chinaculo, the Joyful Hope Shrine, and Joyful Hope, other other things that were Joyful Hope Ministries. And he wanted to know why we were Joyful Hope Missionaries, right? It's like, why did you grab my name? We didn't choose the name. I feel the Blessed Mother called us out. And she, she engulfed us with that understanding of what joyful hope means. And that is to pray. And I'm getting an anointing. To pray with expectancy. To pray, expected hope. you know, with that expectant and hope and faith that God hears your prayer, knows you inside out, and he is going to, to, to um, answer your prayer. And, you know, there is no miracle ever happen without that formula of joyful hope. That the, what the Lord has, has said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to thee. Right? And when we unite ourselves and our hearts to God, we have nothing but joyful hope to give to one another, to, to the world. And we hope that Joyful Hope TV does that for you on a daily basis. We are unscripted. We are candid. We go out every day saying, okay, Holy Spirit. We know in the first couple episodes, we were like, oh, we better plan this out. We better <laughs> write this out. But I think if we were to do that, we would have no time in our day to do anything else. Yeah. We just have to, like, give it to the Holy Spirit. 
and let him run? Well, uh, when we went to King Street this weekend, we actually, uh, we were like praying the rosary flame of love. And then I said, honey, let's go to where it all started. And where it all started, remember when, when the Blessed Mother told me, I invite you to the cemetery, uh, we immediately went to a priest who discerned that it's very much like the Blessed Mother to invite. Right. Not to demand. Not, not to, to demand. I want you to go to the cemetery. I need you to, yeah. So we you don't have to. We right? don't know that, right? So that's the discernment of the priest. So I invite you to the cemetery. That's why we went to the cemetery in the shrine, which is owned by the Diocese of Charleston before. And it was uh, blessed by the Bishop of Alabama, the former Bishop of Alabama, Bishop Baker, during the time. And uh, what was there were the missionary family, missionary priests and his catechists during the golden age of evangelization. So we went there to his tomb and we prayed there until we finished the rosary, Flame of Love. So I think yeah, he's right. interceding for yeah, us too. Yeah, Father Patrick Quinlan, that is, that is the priest that the Lord wanted to acknowledge and he wanted Father Patrick Quinlan and his friends to be exonerated, to, to be honored, and because of the great work they did. And they they really, they were, they had to be creative. They were in the South, there was a lot of prejudice, and they really did above and beyond, you know, heroic deeds that, that really qualify them to be saints. And it was amazing because we didn't know who this priest was, we didn't know what King Street was. We wouldn't have picked King Street to live in whatsoever but god told us he was moving us there and all we had was a mirror uh, uh all we had was was a, a, a prompting a dream but and 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 but hope <laughs> listen to this we were always going to the shrine here in the most blessed sacrament every year for my birthday but yes. in 2015 there was a big flood here and big storm and then we ask the Lord, surely there's a reason why we can't go here. So sometimes there are blocks in our way of what we usually discern is right. And you know, then when we discern that, we decided to go to the shrine of Our Lady of Joyful Hope, not knowing what to expect. Well, it, was, it was amazing. Now, looking back, um, there was a connection with King Street and the shrine of, our, of, of Joyful Hope, Our Lady of Joyful Hope, yes. the shrine. And... The, the, the people that were were making the shrine um, went to Mother Angelica because she was almost like the, the you know, the Bishop Sheen back then. Mother Angelica's advice was sought after. So our friends that, that were in King Street, before we even knew this, went all the way to Alabama, showed them what they were going to do with the shrine and how it was going to be a pilgrim site and how people would come from all over the place. And Mother Angelica blessed, God bless you, Talon, blessed their efforts and said, go for it. Do it. That's what the Blessed Mother would, would want, to be honored. So I, I just, it's so funny that we're here in, in Alabama now. Yeah. But there was a, a big connection between King Street and what King Street will be because we've seen in other people we have even like people in our, our friends in Canada Rob and, and Stanka uh, Lazar in Canada they're dreaming they're dreams, dream, they're having dreams prophetic dreams that they're going to go to King Street and they see pilgrims and pilgrims and pilgrims coming to King Street South Carolina and I'm like wow they don't even know that that's what the 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 the, the people who started the shrine saw too so there's a waiting there's a waiting um, it's not ready. The shrine is closed. It's um, not ready at this There's nobody point. able to, to run pilgrims tours. It's waiting. And so the Lord does that. So the I Lord think another dimension to the prophetic mystery is our Lord makes us wait. Like when, after our meeting with the bishop, the bishop was impressed. The bishop believed the prophecy. He was so thankful and then nothing happened. No, nothing so happened I, for years. So I just want <laughs> you guys to understand that when a prophecy is given, sometimes... Uh, even if you start to act on it, it's like a seed. It needs to be fertilized. It needs time to grow. It needs all the element of the earth, sunshine, 
you know, good air. It needs to be cultivated, fertilized for it to grow. So that's what happened. And then it eventually will bear fruit. You know, could you just imagine if after that moment we stop and we said, uh, the bishop didn't do anything else. Let's I'll quit. Yeah, yeah, I'll quit. Let's stop. But, you know, we just knew that uh, we had to keep going. And it's all about the grace of God. Uh, the God, I mean, God is in charge. He will be the one if he wants you to move forward. Right. And, you know, I think that, you know, looking back, I think where, where we are right now, I, I really feel that, that if we didn't believe something was going to happen any day, we would have lost momentum. We would have lost. It was the fact that we were, you know, going forward in joyful hope that that made us unafraid. And I think that if you would have told me after this meeting from the bishop, that's that's all. That nothing else was going to happen. Hey, Talon, that's kind of loud. Well, let's look at this. It happened 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, eight years. Yeah. Wow. 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 Hey, Tom, you're right. Go so, ahead. so Joy's question is, has, has Father Patrick Winland been honored? From the last time we were there, um, because there's going to be a change in the bishop in the Diocese of Charleston, it's on hold. It's and on so hold until... the new bishop until, makes the decisions. Yeah, it's, it's the decision of the new bishop whether he's going to pursue it or not. But I'm going to tell you this, and this is true across the board when it comes to the Catholic Church, is Satan moves fast, the church moves hmm. slow. It, it's just, it, that's just the way. And if this is, you know, I remember when, when we first started and we had all these mystical experiences and all these miracles, miracle manifestations, you know, things that happened to our family. Joy was healed, I was healed, kids were healed. Um... Grandma was healed, and all this stuff was happening. Um, I was so excited to go out and and evangelize and get people healed. And I remember our spiritual director in North Carolina put his hands over us before we were leaving and said, May the Lord bless this ministry and make it bound and, and grow, you know, from this day forth, slow and steady. And I'm like, what? Wait, whoa, wait, <laughs> why, does why it is it to be slow and steady? Because he said, if it's slow and steady, it's sure and true. If, if, you know, you want to grow slow and steady. You don't want to grow so fast that it becomes bigger and you don't know how to handle it. Oh, yeah. He says, you're nice. like eagles. You and Joy are like eagles, and you're flying high, but you're also targets for the enemy. So the enemy is going to target you when he sees that you're making success. But if you take things slow and steady he says you're going to be seasoned and when success comes it's not going to bother you anyway sometimes when success comes it can be the end of a ministry i know plenty of bands when i was in a band that we, everybody in in different bands i was growing up the ones that got signed to a contract would break up like three months after they got signed wow you know, it's like a curse in itself. it's almost like a curse because it couldn't take that success they started saying, well, what's my part? The drummer would say, hey, I need a bigger part. And the, the guitarist and the, the songwriter would say, hey, you don't even play notes. And then the fight begins. How much are we going to make? How much are we going to show? What are the sacrifices we're going to have to move forward? And if it's not founded in God, I tell you, I'd, any kind of band is going to fall apart with success. And, and I think, you know, that happens with people, too, who win the lottery. All of a sudden, they have nothing, they have nothing, and then they're given millions of dollars, and then they're like dead within a year. Yeah, I think that happens a lot to ministry, especially if, uh, you know, there are founders to the ministry, like we're the founders of the Cross of St. Benedict Society and the Joyful Hope Missionaries, and guess what? None of our children want, want to take on <laughs> the well, next step, right? I mean, Talon does, but, you know, Father Jim's going to take him. Yeah. And, and so, then Iggy does, but then I guess he wants but, to do that lizard thing. Yeah, but I think the, the basic premise is it's really God who gives 
this ministry to edify the church. So for this period, we should be like um, at grateful to God. Grateful and detached from what our yeah. perception of has. Because I don't need my kids to do this ministry if that's not what they want to do. It, that's not their I, mission. I want someone who's on fire, like Kathy Simone and Gail and Grace, to 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 be a part of that ministry when they are excited and on fire for the Lord because we are family. So, you know, I remember one of my kids told me, Dad, you know, they, because we don't have any grandkids, they said, Dad, aren't you worried? Aren't you worried about, you know, making a name for yourself legacy. and your legacy? And I said, my legacy is in heaven. I don't need a legacy on earth. I'm going to die. People are going to look at my tombstone and they're going to say, What's a Batman tombstone doing over here? They're not going to even know my story. They're not going to understand why I'm Batman. They won't even care. I'm going to be dead. How many people remember, you know, someone like the guy who made the Rubik's Cube? I don't know who that guy was, but he was pretty famous. Yeah. So we're, we're not planning the ministry to the point, oh, we want to be known until the end of time. No, nah, we don't need no, a legacy. We, we, it's more of like... What does to, Jesus want us to do right yeah, now? Yeah, to help <laughs> as much people while we're still healthy and we have the energy, you know, and do this with the children. If this is something they can learn something from, then that's awesome. There was a there was a woman who, um, wonderful woman who who wanted to join our ministry and she she was uh, she wanted to be a benefactor. She wanted to just she loved family. She loved the idea of family because she didn't have family, so she wanted to minister with us. And um, when she started to minister, she realized you know, that sometimes we don't we sleep in our car. Sometimes we don't. It's not. It's not like like mission life is uh, like you're a, staying at someone like, else's house like a roller coaster. <laughs> because in the beginning, the faith is there, but you don't have the faith for all the others, like for the provisions. You don't have that much faith because you know if there's no money, how can you move, right? right. So our Lord taught us that to. First, bring in the faith, then everything that you need for the mission will be provided for. And, and, it, and it always was, but there was always a roller coaster. So that, those, you know, that feeling that you get where you're like, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Am I going to make it? That never goes away. And I, I remember Mother Angelica talking about that. Got my interest when Mother Angelica would say, um, she said, the Holy Spirit always answers her prayers, everything, but it never took away her need for Pep Mobismo. <laughs> she said that she had to take Pet Mobismo all the time in Tums. Because Mother Angelica. Mother and, Angelica. Yeah. Because it's because there's so much stress because you're hanging. You don't know. You're you're making leaps of faith and God requires it. But the the roller coaster doesn't stop. And I remember we had a this friend who wanted to travel with us. Um she said that she couldn't take our roller coaster. She just said and the and she said, I wanna serve. I know my life is is towards the, you know, like what do you call it, the season, the, when the sun is setting. The sun is setting in her life. And she says, I want to minister with you guys. and But she goes, I really don't like the roller coaster. and the But she says, I really want to serve. I really want to spend the rest of my life serving. And the Lord gave her an option. He said, I want to almost make a pop quiz out of this because it's so unique what the Lord said. Um, he said there were two ways that she could serve at the end of the setting of her son, of her life. She could either serve as a missionary with, with us, or she could serve the rest of it suffering. Pain. Physical pain, physical sickness, and offering her pain up to the Lord. Guess which one she chose? Pop, Pop Quiz! quiz. We're back. We're back. Physical. That's what Lori says. Suffering. Joy says suffering because she knows the woman. <laughs> what? I didn't say anything. Dottie uh, said physical pain and suffering. Apparently suffering. Apparently <laughs> suffering. Suffering. Kathy said suffering. Kathy said, <laughs> said physical pain. Right. Yes. So the question is, is it pain and suffering or being a missionary S serving in mission life or serving in physical pain those are the two questions right and and so 
I mean, that's the question, you, and those right. are the two answers. You know, sorry, brain fog. Yeah, but, but you know, the, the thing was, is, is obviously because she's the, the, our, our friend is not here with us right now, you would tend to think that the Lord made the suffering. And it's not true. You know, the it's Lord, the, like the, no, no, the Lord didn't say, okay, now you're going to suffer and electric bolts come from his hands. You know, and, and no, that's not, she was already going to suffer because of maybe, you know, um, this, the genetics we're in, you know, you know, you're getting older. Nobody passes this life without suffering. It's almost but she like, was able to offer that suffering up and given the grace to Isn't pray. that my, uh, a part of my message this morning? That's exactly why the, the can Holy you tell, Spirit is... Are you setting that up? Yeah, I was saying okay. for you to set this up now. Uh, Ready? No, I'm now, not. Okay, okay. All right, so... Can you this get is, my this notebook, Tana? So in my this purse. was... This is, it's just there. Uh, when the Lord... We were talking about how the Lord has done all these great things for us. He died for us. He sacrificed for us, and we really don't understand that. We don't understand exactly what he did for us. But there will be times in our life we will, he will offer us mercy, an opportunity to, in some way, give back a token of gratitude to the great sacrifice he's given for us. And there is nothing we really can do to equal what he's given us but there are moments in our life where he will ask us to serve or to suffer or to offer things up and when we say yes our lord turns to his father and say see i told you dad this is why this is you know this is look at i told you they're worth it they're worth the sacrifice right and so we're given mercy when we're called into servitude the problem with the most of us is because we don't know the value what christ gave us that when we're asked to do something for Christ, we don't value and we're not grateful and we reject the great gift of mercy that he calls us when to serve. And that's why we always start off this program as I will serve. Remember, the catechism of our Catholic Church, the main part is to know God, to love God, and to serve God. And that's the order that it has to be because if you don't know God, you certainly won't want to serve God. If you don't know God, you can't love God. And it's not because you're a mean person. Most of the people don't love God because they haven't experienced God. And, they, and you will say, well, what is the cure for that? All these people in the world that are on YouTube and Twitter and are watching porn and doing bad things and doing drugs... What is the cure for them to know God? And I'm going to tell you the cure. You. You were made to be a witness to the nations. You were made to let people know who God is to you so you can spread that love. And once people start to take the chance on God, then they start loving God. And that love ultimately brings us back to service because we want to pay back because love is a two-way street love is not a, just a one-way street so god in his great mercy allows us to love him back in service so there's an opportunity in both ways some of us aren't made to serve but he allows different ways for us to help out some of it might be prayer and suffering some of it might be tithing some of it might be counsel the, the lord has got the perfect opportunity for everyone if we say yes. And so this opportunity, this last mission that we went to was a very, very hard and difficult mission for us because it put us at odds with, with the amount of, of, of work that we need to do that was neglected because we had my mom died and we had COVID and, and so we had to go back and our place was broken into. There was a man living in our house. Our house was a mess. And, and it was it, in all that chaos, there was Jesus. We just had a, what do you want, Lord? What is it do you want? Because in, we can get overwhelmed with the situation and then we can complain to God and say, this sucks. This is terrible. But if we ask our Lord, 
what is your will in this this time and this mission the lord will reveal what it is and so joy um was discouraged when we were there it looks like all of us was discouraged because of the amount of work it needed to we needed to take care of of our stuff and then the lord spoke to joy the first day when we got back so is it today yeah okay so this is my power journal power journal it's too small yeah, it's too small, but it's okay. It's a, just a 30-day challenge. It's small writing mm -hmm. there. But um, I said power journal, the power of the res in the resurrection of Christ. That's how I named it. And then the title is, Have the Time of Your Life. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, That's really good so before, for many, many years, the way our Lord talks to me is in adoration. So the adoration is my portal. It's like a door that uh, when I sit down there and then, you know, like the flame of love opening prayer, I do that um, um, in honor of your most sacred womb. You know, we kiss yeah, we, your um, sacred we, left we, hand we, 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 with, with, sorrow, with deep and, sorrow deep and true and in the name of the, the Father and, and of the Son and, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. In honor uh, of then in honor of your the left of your left sacred wound. Your right of your right hand and your, your left right hand. hand. With honor deep and true, and then we make it the name father, of the Father, Son, son the Holy. And then we say, yeah, in just honor do it with your, us because there's a grace here. In, in honor, honor of, of your left, left uh, sacred foot. Name it's father. sorrow deep, deep and, and true, true. in name the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In honor, honor of, of your, your right sacred wound and your right foot. foot. Name it's sorrow father. deep and true, in yep. the name of the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. And then the side. And then, I like to say the prayer, in honor of your sacred wound on your the side. side. With sorrow, sorrow deep, deep and, and true, true. Mm -hmm. the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So that's five. So five before ones. there was a question in our mind, why is it not the the crowning of thorns wound? You know that he suffered when he was crowned with thorns. Remember, we were discussing this, and some flame of love organizations included. The other, like maybe two weeks ago, I was given a revelation of why. Right. It's different. Like why it's not the crowning of the thorns. Can I make yes. it a pop quiz? You can. Okay, pop quiz. Do they know what the question is? Okay. <laughs> the question <laughs> is, when we're doing She's cute. Uh, the five wounds in the flame of love, we don't include the crowning of thorns wound. You know, the wounds that was inflicted with, with to Jesus in the crowning of Thorns. So we venerate the the right hand, the left hand, the right foot, the left foot, and the side of Jesus. So why why is it that formula instead of the ending with the crown of thorns? So that's the pop quiz. Why pop quiz. quiz. Okay, we're back. Kathy loves the devotion to Jesus' wounds. And it I always cry as I recite it. I know it's hard not to. For right? me, that's when every time I pray it, it's like, it's like I, I feel the whole Jesus in the Holy Eucharist just say, Come in, Joy. Come to the heavenly realm. Come, my daughter. Come. <laughs> that's what I feel when <laughs> I pray that. Okay. Chuck said oh, that's a good the wounds were all when Jesus was on the cross. Boom! That is Tell it! Cool. Give Chuck a boom! The dog's even like that one. I don't know why the dog's barked. Maybe it's mail time. But you know, that's really wise, Chuck. You must be sitting next to Our Lady. So of the question of Tony is, why do we not say anything about the shoulders where he carried the cross that just came across my mind. I've been thinking about it. Yes, it's it's like what Chuck said. The wounds that we're doing for the flame of love was the wounds that 
uh, he incurred, yeah, he on incurred the, on the cross. while he was on the cross. Cross. So the crowning of the thorns was way before, right? And then and the, the shoulder, shoulder was also way. And so also his his left knee. So when he had his knee, it was it was super super bad. The bones were showing on his knee, and he fell down on his knee several times. So there are other wounds like his back and the scourging that we don't acknowledge. So this was just acknowledging maybe a a a moment of when Jesus was on the cross, what he endured on the cross. And it opened up the portal with the five wounds of Christ. Um, so that was why that was chosen. But it doesn't mean the others are wrong. And it doesn't mean we don't acknowledge the other. But everything has a time and no, a place. It's, it's also the wounds he displayed after his resurrection. Wow. wow. Look at that. A, give yourself a boom, Talon. Give yourself That's, a boom. Wow. Can you just imagine how the Holy Spirit is helping us? I, the Holy Spirit doesn't just want us to pray and not know why we're doing things. He wants us to understand that each time we unite ourselves to the wound of our Lord Jesus Christ, a door opens. A door yeah. just opened and Talon yeah. received it. Right, and Chuck Boom. got the first one. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. you're good. Yeah, that Getting was good awesome. at this, yeah. Chuck. Yeah, so okay. that, that was the wounds on the cross that occurred on the cross. And then that was the, the, those wounds that Jesus used as markers of his love. These were points where wow. he said, I loved you this much. And like a tattoo, it never <laughs> left him. It never left him. And it was proof that he loved us. And that's the proof that he used with Doubting Thomas. You know, um, yes, Lord, he was pierced by our iniquities. So all of this comes to the point where after Joy was... Um, I guess we were we were fighting in in the car. Was we we overextended ourselves? I drove. I chose to drove because I had orders and swords to make and crosses to make and rosary crosses to make. <clears throat> I chose that I need to get home that night on Sunday, and I drove seven and a half hours. I made the whole family go back because I needed to work. For, and I was I overextended have, Joyce. She was really tired, and I shouldn't have done it. And we I just have, but we just had a different approach to I, doing it. I went to confession and confessed. Oh, that's great! You can stay in my bed oh, again. Thank you. Thank you. But anyway, um, the thing though is, not, uh, in the past, when you know, I say these five wounds, prayers, holy wounds, sacred wounds. Uh, our Lord talks to me. It's like a portal is just opened. And he talks to me like a father talks to his daughter. That has been the relationship that I had with our Lord. But lately, maybe I'm growing up a bit. He gives it to me. In, he infuses the knowledge. And then in my power journal, I summarize the insight I got from our Lord. Do you know? Do mm -hmm. you see the difference? Yeah. Okay. Well, and the other the other difference is is he gives he gives you a, a passage to read and then I unpack it and yes. we talk about it. So so now like, he makes us work together. Together and it's and, it, and it's beautiful and I like it. But you know he still gives joy personal messages too. It's just this is what he's been doing lately in the APC is 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 making us unpack the gospel and work together and to contemplate on what God is telling us. Yes. Thank you, Gail, because Gail called us to tell us, please stop, please rest. I'll pay for it if you're worried about the funds, you know. So that thank you, Gail. That had a little Gail. bit to do with it, but I, I thought I could make it. And and um, I'm getting older, so you're right. I, I needed to stop. And it was a cause for us to fight about it, right? So I shouldn't have done that. And I did go to confession, so I'm sorry, Gail. <laughs> You know, like Joy says, like I'm on a train, I don't stop. I just, I kept on thinking, yeah. Talon and I can, well, you know, Talon and I are When Patrick is hungry and tired, he's like, <laughs> he's like a train. You can't stop him. But yeah, anyway, that's threw good, me under I the think. Bus. <laughs> no, I think that's good when you're fasting, when you're, you're resolved. Like I quit so many times in fasting, but because of that resolve, you become like a train. You finish until the end, you know, that's a grace. But, yeah, but sometimes I, need to, I, need I to don't, hear you guys too. but I don't take it well though because i like to talk about things you know plans i like to be on the same page 
we with should you. Be. Yeah. But we when be, you're yeah. on a train, I, I can't stop you to even just talk <laughs> about it. Oh, that makes me very upset. It but, was nice to get home to a nice clean house and sleep in your own bed. Uh, yeah, that was good, right? Our house was clean. Oh, when we came here, because remember, Father Blunt visited us the day before, so our house was perfectly it was immaculate. Clean. <laughs> it was immaculate. So when we came home, Joy said, I forgot we cleaned the house. I'm not as mad as I was before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bad. Yeah. Okay. I like clean house. Okay, who wants to hear this prophecy? Okay. okay so basically, go. this is the one I got from our Lord. Okay. My, I had my heart pierced today from avoiding and, res, and uh, resisting, I put in parentheses, um, physical servanthood, where you serve your family or others through physical labor or through physical work, you know. So that's what we were doing in King Street. A yeah. lot of cleaning, a lot of lifting up boxes. It was horrible, and it was hot, and it was... It was a lot of work. So sometimes we do serve, but sometimes we just delegate, right? So it's we're not talking about that servanthood where uh, you're, you, you're hired, you're asked to help because you have the knowledge on how to make it work versus doing the actual physical work. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm resistant to the physical servanthood. It's a necessary step to sainthood. That's what wow. our Lord said. It's a, can you read that again? Physical servanthood is a necessary step to sainthood. That's a boom. So it's like we almost couldn't go to heaven if we don't have like, what you call this thing Would in you, your hands? What's uh, a, a wedding cal ring? Callus. A calluses. Oh, calluses. Yeah. calluses. So, it's, so I think this unpacking of what the Lord said is that we were resistant to all the work and we were complaining about it. And here it was a gift that the Lord said this is a necessary, because he wants to make us saints. So there was a necessary part to our sainthood that required us to physically labor in the field. Yes. And wow. I think Michael Kern helped us understand this too because he went um, to help us move and he was doing physical work. Yeah. So I think what he, he was did, lifting things yeah. for me, and I'm like, Mike, I can get this, I can get this, and Mike is the one who has a bad back, but I think he got it. I think he got it, and I think it encouraged all of us to see Mike work so hard, diligently hard, because he knew that was a part of his sainthood, that he was called to serve, and that's what he was doing. It was amazing. So that's physical servanthood. To serve, this means to serve until your body can handle servanthood through physical illnesses so our lord i i might not have written it very well but what he was trying to say that another way to serve our lord is through physical illnesses so this that is he brings I, us I just, where okay. our body and flesh will be purified so this this really brings me to to an understanding that god in god's economy he uses every opportunity to help purify us to glorify god and first our servitude and when we cannot serve anymore at the other end is pain and suffering which he did not create but is a consequence for us being in in this this valley of tears we all suffer well also like um i don't know where i get this i i just feel entitled oh if you have the brains and you're good in managing and delegating stuff. You really don't have to do any physical servanthood because you're already you're 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 exhausted already planning, making things. Life is good, you know. Mm. You're on the planning part of the whole scene instead of doing like, yeah, you do physical servanthood, but there's a limit to it, right? For me, I have physical. Uh, I have. Uh, like uh, I have back pain for like 12 years of my life when our Lord healed me you know I slowly got out of that pain but it still bothers me well, that um, but the difference with my back pain before and my fibromyalgia and spinal stenosis is before it's continuous for one whole month three times a year I go to the doctor three times a year 
but now it's the normal soreness right. it's the normal okay, back so pain of let, let me muscle pain and then yeah. next morning it's gone right so let me explain this it's nothing compared to the crippling pain that she had before yeah so when before when it was crippling you, you you were out for a month she would just stay in bed she couldn't even walk um, the kids would have, while I was at work, the kids would have to pick her up so she could just go to the bathroom and shower her. It was really bad. So there's a night and day. I really feel that it isn't as much as back pain as it is she's not used to the physical load. So like if, if, if she was completely healthy from day one, she would have built up natural muscles. She would have been athletic. She would have been able to do things. The point is, is now she's she's a little bit older, at least 26. She, so all of a sudden, weak. you have to jump into a, a physical thing that you're not used to. That's why I say stretch. You got to stretch. Stretching You got to walk. That's why our kids say, mom, walk. Mom, you got to walk. Because she does a lot of her work in her head, and she implements on the computer and, you know, on the APC. So when she has to do physical work, she's just not used to it, and she gets tired real quick. And it gets, you just have, like, you don't have that endurance, you know, so, but it's not like, you know, what it was before at all. So our Lord was also saying, we tend to avoid physical pain by taking medications and pain prescriptions. And um, it's also revealed that the wound of substance abuse and alcoholism is the inability or the fear actually to face uh, some of our emotional anguish wow or so like a, it's an escape yeah or a perceived entitlement or a failure to serve god a failure to serve god really yeah. and avoidance wow. of pain of anxiety the pain of anxiety because to be anxious is painful when you're always anxious it's also painful right yes we never really considered so and you want it relief from yeah. the anxiety, so that would cause someone to drink. And if you don't have God, man, you would need something if you're so stressed out, right? I, I can't imagine dealing with the stress load that we have without God. Mm -hmm. And I can hardly blame someone who is, who is highly anxious or highly stressed or going through a, a, a life crisis without some kind of relief. You know, praise God that I have an outlet that I can go to the Lord and I can pray. Thanks God that I have, I have the APC to have people pray with me because I don't think I would be able to make it without God. I think yeah. that in those poor people that, that substitute God for drugs and alcohol or sex or some kind of something to make them feel like to calm them down. And I think that's what the, the world is experiencing is they're indulging in sin because they don't know God. Yes. Right? And so they're looking for a substitute because they can't bear the pain. Now, there are some people that, even on the APC, that are taking pain medicine. We're not speaking against that. We're not speaking against you taking pain medicine. Yeah, because sometimes, um, uh, from what I've experienced, if you can't manage your pain, it goes to a point where you cannot manage it. <laughs> or you can't even pray because you're yeah. in so much pain. So I would say you, you do the best you can. Yeah. And if you can't offer up the pain, you have to take medicine. So be it. God made medicine to help you deal with stuff. But there are oh, so many other things we can give up. So many, like people being rude we can like forgive them and we can pray for them we can do uh, a sacrifice of praise when we don't feel like praising the lord there are so many opportunities we can do so it's it's sort of like um the lord is i think is saying is there are opportunities that we have that we can serve him that we complain about you know and so it's like oh that pierces my heart pierces because my heart. i complain now, when I was, when I, I was like, just before the APC was, we remember we took a break from the APC for a little while because we had to get stuff together. Mom died. I interiorly, I was complaining about needing more sleep, about dealing with things. And then it was taken from me. And I had this, this need to meet and pray that wasn't being met until I could. And I think it was taken away from me as long as I needed to understand that I was grateful for it. Yeah. And I was grateful and I couldn't wait to get back to the APC. That I can't imagine like my life without it. the APC. Yeah, yeah, appreciate you know, it. And, and so 
the Lord does that. We're, we're, we're going through mountains and valleys, right? And so... Yeah. So I, I want to ha- uh, just do a pop quiz based on this revelation. Um, what do you think our Lord is saying? Which is better, physical pain and suffering or... Uh, serviam. <laughs> or the serviam. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. What do you want? Okay, we're back. In your front. Um, okay, here here it is. Uh, Lori, the, 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 the answers are coming. Lori Halliday says, best in either way is to unite it to the cross. Amen. Give Lori a boom for that. Chuck said equal. Joy said uh, serviam. Donna said serviam. Randy said, whatever Lord wills, God knows best. Ooh. Rock the ice cream for Randy. Serve <laughs> Kathy Simone, serve yum. God takes care of the rest. Amen. Grace said, serve yum. Right. Tony said, yes, amen. Praise God. The glory goes to the Lord God, Jesus, to Jesus Christ. Christ. Susie, Susie says, says serve yum. And Donna says, I had enough <laughs> pain. Okay, I wa- I, I'm a weenie. When, no, I want to, and Lori is not. I'm, I'm a weenie, and Lori is not. Okay. But you know what? That's the way the Lord made you, you know? Yeah. And you are really good well, we, in the service. Well, Donna, you know, had, Donna was so awesome when we had the last conference. I know, Donna she came had, and played guitar for know, us. And but sang. Donna had an accident before. So she had a lot of pain, you know? Right, but you had you had a lot of pain too. What do you like better? Do you like well, serving I, or the pain? It's not about my question. Is what did God say? Which is better, the serviam or the physic? That's my question. Oh. What did God reveal? Because He gave an answer. Okay. Oh, God did give an answer. Yes. So, which is better, physical pain and suffering or serviam? Okay. okay. So Wendy said both are great if they are offered. Intentions are, are everything. everything. Kathy said, well, you're serving both ways. But really, I think our Lord is looking at the disposition of our hearts. You're right, if you're winning, Kathy. That's really insightful. If you're whining or it's all a wash. Okay, this is what he said. Okay, okay, wait. This is what the Lord said. Oh, he's quiet. Both are good. <laughs> I think it is the disposition of the heart. I mean, you know, I remember, I forgot which saint, maybe it was Saint Faustina who said that she saw three people. The first people were carrying the cross. The second people were dragging the cross, or, or, or not embracing the cross, but they were they were pulling the cross. And the last people were dragging the cross on the ground. And both, he said, these are my three servants, you know. Um, and And they were all servants of God. They were all doing the will of God. But their dispositions were shown. How are we carrying our cross? We're all going to have to carry a cross. All believers, there is an intent when you wake up in the morning and a decision to make, to be made to serve God and to love God because you know God. Unlike your atheist friends and your family members who've rejected God, you know God. Well, that so, is actually the difference between Catholic uh, liberation and deliverance versus the Protestant deliverance uh, ministry. The difference is we know how to accept suffering because we ask God, why is he permitting this suffering? And then once we know the will of God, we embrace the cross. But the Protestant uh, liberation and deliverance is get this pain out. Right. Get this pain they don't out. even have um, Jesus on the cross. Yeah, they don't understand because they don't something. they don't understand that that's a gift from God, right? Yes. And the the fact that because I was talking to Father Jim about this um, maybe a couple years ago, and no, there's no sightings of Ralph yet, but we're gonna look for him. Okay, so what I was talking to Father Jim years ago was I don't I I have a problem with some pastors, some priests using suffering as a as a to gather their people come on everybody let's suffer and i'm like how are you going to get people promoting suffering 
You know, I said, I said they shouldn't be promoting suffering. Jesus called it the passion, not the suffering. And Father Jim's answer was this. He said, well, Patrick, we're all suffering. We're already suffering. Nobody does not not suffer. No matter how we want to imagine that Elon Musk isn't suffering, he's suffering. There are things in his life that aren't working out that are very painful. Just because he has a bunch of money and he's buying Twitter doesn't mean his life is better, right? He is suffering. Even if it's without God, he is suffering. And, and there's nothing he can do about it unless he understands that there's value behind it and he offers it back to God. And this is the, the miracle that we have in knowing God is that he does not allow something to happen without without um without it gaining great merit yeah like randy says here uh he said it perfectly here yes we are all body of christ one body many parts uh we have our own time talent treasure to share to build kingdom of god's work that was part of the insight though that uh, i got this morning that um you know, if, for example, Patrick is suffering, you are also suffering with us, right? Whatever happens to us and whatever happens to you, because we're part of the church, you yeah, know. So in the same way, um, everyone that is in your midst and you know they need prayer, we want to pray right away for them because they're part of our church. Even the sinners, though. Because the way God looks at sinners is not the way we look at sinners or those people that offend us, right? So we yeah. hesitate to pray for some of our enemies because, because they don't look like our friends and yeah. they make our life hard. But Donna also said here, I think the disposition of the heart is most important. Uh, what does God want for us and will we do what he wants? Yeah. Chuck yeah. said nobody gets out alive. So if my next question is, if you have a choice and God doesn't give this option to many people, like um, I have learned that some people, he just gives the pain, he just gives the illness, you know, that's just part of uh, his mercy for us that he shares uh, suffering uh, with us so that we can unite our suffering with him. But uh, I have met a few souls that our Lord actually gave them that option. So I just want you to ask you, if you guys were given the option to choose um, servium or offering physical up, illness. Offering up suffering and pain. What do you think would be the desire of your heart? Pop quiz. <laughs> Patsy said, everyone suffer in different way. Chuck said seasonal. <laughs> he wants it to change. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't want one. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, come with me. Wendy wants it. Servium. With a voice like that, how could she do anything else? Yeah, she's got a beautiful voice. So, you know, I mean, and some of you got to think. Um, Susie says, I chose Servion. You know, um, you just got to think, you know, sometimes you're going to get both. Oh, Randy wrote a book. John <laughs> said either. God gives us the grace with both. Oh, his, she's brave. Donna said, Servion, after the accident and the pain, the Lord uh, allows me to see the desire of my heart. So it's like. She really wants more to serve, right? And I love what Patsy said. Now, if you guys don't know Patsy, she's a powerful testimony. I would love to have her on it as a guest. Um, but she she is a cancer survivor, so she's she, she suffered. Knows what she knows what suffering and to be faced with death that I'm going to die and I got to get my soul ready. And look at she's still around. And she says the important part is we learn to love. 
So wow. it's so hard to love when you're so, so beautiful, sick. Patsy. Sometimes let's give Patsy a bull, yeah, Talon. A That's boom. a great bull. Sometimes, yeah, give her a boom, and then I want to talk a little bit about Patsy. Um, you know, when you're sick, sometimes we, you know, how we say we, we're trying to embrace the cross, and we say, "Okay, Lord, I accept this, and I offer this up," but oftentimes. When I'm sick, I give myself a right to be nasty because I'm sick and everyone should know that I'm sick. And I've, and I've done this over and over and I realized, wow. You mean you? I, I, me. I, I, when I get sick. You mean you? Yes. <laughs> You're being funny. Like when no, I used I'm just to, talking about you. Yeah, I'm talking about me. Okay. Like when I fast, you know, I have to make certain yes. that I don't get nasty or give myself. Oh, yeah. I remind um, you, though, you're being not nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do. And it's good that you do. Okay. Uh, Kathy, though, said, feels like both are coming no matter <laughs> oh, No matter how you look at it. Lori <laughs> said, pray about it first and unite to God's will. Amen, Kathy Lord. Simone said, I believe if we suffer severely on earth and accept it uh, and keep loving God, we may be inviting some of our time. Uh, limiting, limiting some of our, our time, time in purgatory. Amen. Mike said, Sir Young. So, it's a delicate question. Really. Yeah, and you know, you don't have a lot of choices. <laughs> no, sort of like there, are, there are souls that our Lord gives the option. Right, but most of us don't. Yeah, some of, most, most of us, us don't. We've got to take the next right steps right now or, you know. But um, as, as we come to a close, this has been a wonderful uh, episode. And so make sure that you share, make sure you like it. That always helps. Um, but what I wanted to say, too, is that... Um, the the October show that we're doing over in New York at Rosa Mystica will fill out. Some of you called in and are starting to reserve places. Think about sharing a house. Think about sharing one of those places. So, you know, we got a group of family members and then that will bring down the cost if we're all in one place. I think Kathy you know? got a cabin, and each cabin has four beds, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this. But are there are also bigger houses that we just got to find out about, you know, that are there on the property. I, I just don't, don't know. I, I don't know that there are big houses there. They seem we like to be the same. We stayed in a big house. That's for the um, priest, I think. She's going to be awful lonely. In the big old house with all no, those No, sometimes bedrooms. they have retreats there for priests. Yeah, I don't know. I That's don't know. We I just understand. had to ask. We got to ask. It's the first time we're going to be, you know, there. So Mike is now the Euc a Eucharistic minister. He's going to give us awesome. the Eucharist when we're sick. Yeah. From Pittsburgh. Thank you. Way to go, Mike. Yes. So call Rosa Mystica. Say, we want Patrick and Joy. We want. <laughs> They'll feel love. Tell well, me we sent you. Thank you guys for joining us today. It's a wonderful episode because you you guys are here to make it more real and make it more applicable to our situation. And uh, thanks for your cooperation and uh, in our pop quizzes. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, let's unite together in prayer. In the name of the, the Father, Father, Son, Son and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our, may our feet, feet journey, journey together. together, may, may our, our hands gather in unity, may our hearts beat in unison, may our souls be in harmony, may our thoughts be as one, may our ears listen to the silence together, may our glances profoundly penetrate each other, may our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. O oh, Papa God, Holy Spirit, O oh my Jesus, we praise you, we bless you, and we thank you. O oh Lord, in your compassion, pour upon us, your children, your precious blood, from the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet. Blessed Mother, wrap us in your holy mantle of love and protection, to blind, thwart, and conquer the enemy. Chase heart of St. Joseph, tear our demons, protect and guide our faith. St. Michael, defend us in battle. All you holy angels and saints, pray for us. All you souls in purgatory, pray for us as we pray for you. O oh Lord Jesus, we ask you to seal this conversation in your precious blood from its very beginning to its very end in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I trust in you. Through sacrament, seat me, Luke's me, the Holy Cross be my light. 
non draco sit me dux. Let not the dragon be my guide. Vade retro satana, nun quam suane mi vana. Sunt mala quae libas ipse venena bibas. Begone, Satan, never suggest to me thy vanities. What you offer is evil. Drink the poison yourself. Pax. Jesus. 